Hello guys. So welcome to Wild and Basic. So today is another episode, like video episode. I am trying to get used to this because it's getting like super weird. Um, with me like hearing myself in the microphone. I'm so used to it when I do it like in the What is like an audio version, but like when I'm doing like a video, it's like throwing me off I feel like I do need to hear myself like here and there like this it's gonna be like a DJ If you are on like the video, you're gonna know what I'm talking about <laughs> But if you don't know, I am literally just like this. I would be probably listening to myself to make sure it sounds all right but anyways so welcome guys welcome to today's episode so today we are going to be actually touching base on hate comments and I have definitely talked about it before in my videos and also a couple times on my TikTok and also I think one of the episodes on this podcast but this time it's gonna be more fun I'll be reacting to these comments <laughs> I went through all of my social media channels, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, well, not Facebook, I don't have Facebook, Instagram, everything, I mean, everything I have owned and I've used, Pinterest even, went through all these mean comments that I could find and I want us to react to it. It's going to be more like a fun reaction, it's going to be funny, but also there is some truth to it, obviously. Um, I just wanted to make it like lighthearted episode, but also just put it out there that like, there are comments like that, that people put it out there, that there's not much you could do about it, and it honestly truly sucks, but honestly there's nothing you could do about it, so hence this episode. And also I've seen some other people doing it too, I feel like it's kind of fun to react to your comments, and I could also do this like regularly because I don't think they're ever going to stop, so. <laughs> Before that, let me do a little bit updates. This is something that I'm going to be doing a lot. Like on, I used to do it every episode as well, so it's going to be like that. So, little update about life and what's been going on. So, great thing about being in Miami so far. I would say ever since like when I first moved here, like first couple of weeks like things were very different and I was kind of like having second thoughts to be honest I was like I don't know if Miami is right for me like is this like the place that I want to be at but then I started making friends I started meeting people and this past weekend I went to my first influencer uh, event in Miami I haven't been to many influencer events in New York City but I have never been to influencer event like I feel like outside of New York City. Maybe I have been to one in LA, but that was like kind of like a movie. It's like a premiere movie, very different story. This one was like an event, not like a very big scale event, but something like that I want to check it out and like explore and also meet other creators. So that was definitely good. And it was like with the Par Parisian skincare brand and made a connection with them. So I was very happy about that. So things are, I feel like slowly coming into place for me. I feel like I'm finally starting to like get a hang of Miami and that's 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 feeling good like I, I really feel like uh, it's finally becoming home I feel like it definitely takes time and for a lot of people that does too like not just with Miami like you know wherever you moved just in the beginning you know things are very different you know like you don't feel like you belong to this place and you don't feel like it's happening but it does I feel like you just really put yourself out there and I have explained this a lot in the previous episode but also on top of it you know I have made uh, friends along the way and I feel like it's like in the process of becoming better friends I guess but uh, I am very excited in that aspect and uh, I feel like also things are slowly adding up in my social calendar work-wise but also like just casual social calendar I guess so that's been making me feel better because I think when I first got here yes I had like um, PR or like brand deals that I have to do myself but I was kind of missing out on the aspect of like social life friends or like events that's something I was like really craving for and I feel like those are finally happening 
and that is something I am very excited about. So we'll see how that's gonna happen and how that's gonna go. But those are the little bit updates so far. So without further ado, let's get on to today's episode. Let me start with the one that is I'm like <laughs> kind of humbling. <laughs> Because this is very funny actually. Like this happens a lot I feel like on TikTok. Ever since like TikTok came around, this is what's been happening to me. The days that I feel better about myself or I just feel okay I guess. Then I go on TikTok, I either do a live or like just post something. Then maybe like one or two comments that come along and I'm just kind of like what is going on, right? <laughs> so there is this thing that I posted, like I just wanna give you guys a little bit of a context. Uh, so the sound goes is like, hold on, what does the sound go like? Yeah, the sound was like, oh, you said I'm so like effing boring, uh, but that's so rich coming from you, something like that. So it's a, it was a trend, obviously. I feel like everyone knows this. Like on TikTok, there's just trends everywhere, and like some sounds are kind of like iffy, com controversial. Some are not. So I was just going with that, right? And I was like, oh, like you said, I'm so effing boring. Then someone in comments is like, it's kind of true. So it's like, you know what? Like, fine. You think it's fine like that I'm boring, you know, it's okay, I mean, you know, maybe I'm not the most interesting person that you have met <laughs> or you have followed, uh, but I also checked, like, they're following me, so I'm like, I don't even know who you are, but the fact that you're calling me boring, like, it's cool, that's what I'm saying, it's like, I'm not gonna take it seriously, <laughs> but it's like, you know what happens, like, some days, like, you know, you just feel better about your content or you just feel... I don't know, you just feel better about yourself or what's going on and things like this happen. Obviously this is like, I feel like just tip of the iceberg, it's nothing like that bad of a comment but just the fact that you're seeing that because it's like a trend that I feel like you wouldn't expect people to take it like so seriously or just like just literally because the trend was just like, oh like people would be like, it's more about like lifting you up. not letting you down, but that tends to happen the other way around for me. <laughs> Anyways, so let's do the second one. So this one is actually an ad that I posted about this company called Keeps. So it's like they have shampoo, they have uh, conditioner, they have other products for uh, men's hair, and it's like uh, it's helping you, it helps the men's hair like growth, hair growth process, essentially that's what it is. So then other person, that's something like, uh, other person says, because the product I'm promoting is I think like part of it is minoxidil. It's like a very common uh, product that people use for hair growth. So, and he's like um, promoting minoxidil to people that who don't have hair loss because I don't have hair loss, I guess. Or just overall, I don't know, to him, I guess. I'm not sure what he's meaning by that. And he's like, I mean, to be... I think honest, it looks like this dude does have hair loss and a transplant based on the thinning on his hair. So here goes my another confidence, right? Like there it is, you know. People think that I have hair loss or and also he thinks that I have a transplant. So it's alright, you know, like, some pills, I feel like the time that I saw the comment, I was kind of pissed about it, but I was like, okay, it's whatever, because I, the reason I feel like I get pissed about this a lot is because I remember my ex used to say this shit to me all the time, that like, are you sure you're not getting bald, are you sure, like, your hair is not thinning? Let me just clarify a few things, um, yes, I have, like, thin hair, Usually, that's how it's been my whole life. I have white hairs, that is something I accepted, and that has been like that since I was like, I don't know, 15, 16, it's very genetics. And I, my dad, also had very like, thin hair. We never had like, oh my god, full grown hair. 
I mean, we are white people, like, just, it's different. Like, I, I never had, like, a full kind of hair. I mean, you can see now. I mean, it just depends. And also, there are times that I just cut my hair very short because I just don't like too much hair. That's just me. But the fact that people ask me this many times that, like, if I got a hair transplant and, like, or people assume, not even just assume, they little, legit just tell me that I've gotten a hair transplant and I'm hiding it. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know why would I hide that unless it was a brand deal. <laughs> if brand was paying me, I don't know. But I don't know if I would get it though. I have no idea. So, so no, I don't have hair transplants or I mean hair thinning if you think it is. I probably, I guess. I don't know. It was a check, okay? It was for the check. Like I think that's something I want to make it very clear. First, I still use their products, the shampoo and conditioner, but also on top of it is I feel like, I don't know, like, don't you sometimes do stuff for work? Like, assume this advertising is my work, so I do things for that, and a lot of creators do things for that, so I'm just gonna end it with that. Next one, this one is very juicy, actually. <laughs> Not, I'm laughing at this, but like, I remember, uh, because this is a comment that I usually get quite a lot, or especially even when I'm doing my lives. Your voice is very annoying. Grow up. So, uh, I get this comment, like, all the time. And it's associated with another comment that I'm going to get into it very at the end, because I feel like it's just not like a positive note, and I want to end it towards it later. So, yeah, I might sound, my voice can sound, I don't know, off sometimes, different. Let me explain a little bit. Like, when I was a kid, I had a different voice. Obviously, everyone had different voices when they were kids. And I could actually sing when I was a kid. I remember I have, I have sang in, like, competitions. I have sung in other competition. I have, um, I have sung at, like, some, like, some stuff at the church or some places at like the school like I have done stuff like that like and I could say like at that time but ever since I hit puberty which was about I don't know when I was like 14 15 my voice started to change and it was kind of like this honestly I don't think it has changed a lot but there are times that my voice becomes like I don't know like very like I guess like somewhat manly but there are times that it becomes a bit more feminine it like switches back and forth and to be 100% honest I have zero control over that there are occasions that I could kind of control it my pitch but the way how it sounds like there is absolutely no control over that pitch I can somewhat control somewhat Again, also I'm not a singer, so I don't know what I would do. Uh, but also on top of it is I feel like I shouldn't be thinking about how my voice sounds like. If it is annoying, I am so sorry. Please don't. You don't. don't uh, you don't have to listen to me. Legit, don't have to listen to me. If you don't like how I sound like, please block me. Like, please unfollow me. Please, I don't know. Like, do something else. You don't have to follow me, you don't have to like me. If you think I, my voice is super, super annoying, you don't have to tell me. Because these are some things that I cannot change. I mean, like, do you want me to get a surgery? Like, do you want me to change my voice? Do you want me to, like, dub myself? <laughs> Just like people do in, like, uh, TV shows? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there is very, like, little things I could do, and... To be honest, sometimes I do like my voice. Yes, it might sound annoying sometimes. It might sound like... Like this sometimes. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, it, it is something that like I have, I was born with and um, I'm learning to be proud of it. Because I just don't care at this point. Anyways, now let's move on to the next. So, this one is kind of connected to the other thing that I was just going to mention. People say that, like, the, your voice sounds gay. Like, it's like I am making this voice because, like, to, 
to be gay or to sound gay. I, I don't know what they're trying to mean, but like that's essentially what it is. No, I'm not pretending to sound like this. This is legit how I sound like. I talk to brands like this. I talk to people like this in a business meeting. This is how I talk. Yeah, maybe there are times that I try to be more gentle or there are times that I try to be, I don't know, like a bit more polite. I don't know, like I feel like sometimes when I'm nervous my voice can get very feminine because I am super nervous and I'm watching what I'm saying but also I, my voice, I just cannot control it. I just get so, um, so nervous and like things. I don't know how it sounds like. Also when my voice is being recorded it sounds completely different than what it sounds like right now to my ears. Hence, I was listening to that one point and I cannot listen to it anymore. Because it's like, I just can't. I'm just saying. So there are, there are stuff like that that happens. But no, I don't make myself sound like that. This is legit how I sound like that. And it's not like a gay voice. Because I think that's something people mention a lot. Like, oh, um because this person is like looks so muscular but he sounds I'm ma muscular but he sounds like uh he sounds very feminine like people say that I think about Kyle Krieger he's like one of the influencers on Instagram um like people say like oh he sounds like that but I'm like I don't like he doesn't make that I'm pretty sure he doesn't make that that's just how he sounds like and that's okay I feel like you don't have to make him feel bad about, bad about himself. I mean, I also don't think he cares, but I'm just saying from my perspective that it's just something, <laughs> a part of you, you know what I mean? And you cannot change that. All you can do is to, to be proud of it. And I mean, if you just don't like it, just don't, don't say anything or just like leave, honestly. Okay, yeah, this is something I was saying, like why are you talking like gay? That's the comment that I just mentioned about it. Then other one that's related to this one as well. Um, uh, this is a bunch of them I'm gonna read, then I will get into it. He's definitely gay. Gay AF. That is gay. 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 So gay. No gays. You so gay, you look gay, I'm like what other ones? Okay, essentially you guys get the point, that's what it is comes to. Uh, yes, I'm gay, I feel like I made that very clear from the very beginning, I don't know if I have to say that many times. Am I in the gay niche or am I considered like a gay influencer? There's nothing wrong with that, I'm just saying. No, probably not. I am more in the lifestyle niche, lifestyle, beauty, somewhat fashion. Um, sometimes it like goes into health. Lifestyle overall in that niche. So maybe that's why I'm reaching, uh, I reach more to like overall demographic, not just I guess gay demographic. I have a lot of women followers, I have a lot of men followers, maybe a lot of men followers who are also not necessarily gay and that's okay because my content is not like tailored toward gay men, it's tailored toward anyone who resonates with that content and that content is not necessarily about gay men, it's about like uh, products I use, it's about like the some stuff I eat, nutrition, I don't know like things to do in your life, stuff like that, which is something everyone does, not just gay person. And there's nothing wrong with being gay, but the fact that I feel like people has to say that, or like just point it out, I feel like that what gets me, gets my water, gets my water, I mean gets my <laughs> blood boiling because I just don't understand what's like what you are trying to say. I mean if you're homophobic, that's okay. I get it, that's you, but you don't have to comment that, you know what I mean? Because there's not much I can do with that, and um, I don't know what to take out that, honestly. It's like the similar equivalent of what you were just saying, what people were just saying earlier, that like, my voice sounds gay or my voice is annoying, there's nothing I could do about it. It's something that defines me, that's like who I am, there's absolutely nothing I can do, but thank you for that irrelevant comment that <laughs> I honestly don't know what to do with it. 
<laughs> I wanna try next time or once in my life just to see. I just don't feel like I would ever do it, but just type be like, you're straight. You're so straight. I wanna see what would people say. People will probably like you're so annoying. <laughs> Sometimes I like comments like this because I'm like, maybe she's trying to be you know, like not critical, but like she's just trying to get constructive feedback. Then also these were some of the uh, pictures that I'm like, I tried so hard and be like, I really want to make myself look good, or I just want to look good. And I think I feel like I used this picture for my podcast cover or something. And someone said, ew, other person just straight up put a uh, poop emoji poop emoji and another poop emoji then he said something in another language then I translate that, it means trash so, and then this is all about the same picture and someone said you look like a, you look like shroud lol I honestly didn't know what that meant but it, it's like, I think it's like a claw that people use for like dead person um, so like, I, I guess she meant like I look like a dead person. Um, this, I'm like, maybe. <laughs> maybe they're right, I don't know. <laughs> because I remember, this was probably like in, back in 2000, I don't know, 19, 18. There were times that like, I was like still, not like new, but I was like kind of like overly editing my photos time the times like I had these filters and I don't know if I had my own filters or they were just like the filters that I got from Visco I don't know if Visco was a thing at that time but Visco was so popular at one point so I feel like I was using that and I feel like at that point I wasn't like editing it that detailedly I was kind of like slapping the filter and I, instead of like uh, adjusting it a little bit I would maybe adjust just a little bit, but I, I everything was so like over the top for me. Not in a bad way, but it was more like I wanted a lot of colors. I wanted like less skin tone and everything. And when I'm looking at the picture, yeah, I do look like I am pale. Like I look very pale. Like, I don't know, like you guys cannot see, but I look very pale. So I can see maybe I look like I'm about to die or I, I'm dying, something like that. So I give you points for that guys, like that was actually very constructive feedback, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All it made me feel bad about it because I feel like I probably spent like two and a half hours or at least two hours for that picture to edit and like post about it and like do it. So, um, you know, it's okay. I'm trying to swallow that pill. Another one, this was the one that was kind of like uh, popular and I have, I feel like I have probably talked about this everywhere and I just want to mention it here. I'm kind of like over it, but at that time I was kind of like, what's going on? So there was this time, there was another app that was very popular, it's called 21 Buttons. It's kind of like an app that people, a lot of influencers were using it to post their, like, uh, their outfits. And there was a time that I posted this because I was going to a festival, I think, and um, I got these sandals that were kind of like somewhat stri not uh, striped, checkered, yeah, checkered. It, it looks like a checkboard essentially, uh, like black and white boxes, stuff like that. And I wore them, and I was like, oh, I I really don't like the look of the feet or any feet. Like I just don't like feet. Like, I just feel like feet are something so gross. <laughs> so anyways, I, I just wore socks with the sandals. and But the, it's not one of those sandals that like you just wear. Like you had a strap on the side and everything. It wasn't like a slide, it was like a sandal. So, and I was wearing a t no, I was wearing t-shirt and I was wearing like some shorts with it and stuff like that. So people come at me that, oh, you're wearing socks with the sandals. That's like horrible. Like that looks so bad. It's so ugly. And 
someone else said, I mean, there was one comment that says, like, so ugly, and another person was like, socks and sandals, ew. Socks and sandals, like, bark emoji. You know what? It's cool. Maybe everyone has different tastes when it comes to that. But I, I feel like, and the thing is, what I was, like, why I wasn't even chosen to do it is because I'm pretty sure whenever usually I am planning an outfit for an event or stuff like that, I go on Pinterest or I go on TikTok, I go on Instagram. I don't think there was TikTok at that point. But yeah, I go on platforms like that and I just look for ideas. And I'm pretty sure I saw this uh, very popular uh, Instagrammer at the time. I think he had like 1K followers, 1 millions of followers or something. Uh, and I saw him wearing it and very similar sandals too and it was just white socks I was like oh this kind of looks cool and I feel like it's kind of like nice I like white socks I have to be honest I like like it could be 100 degrees outside I would still don't mind wearing long like crew socks I think that's what it's called long socks honestly not super long that it comes to all the way to your knees but crew socks honestly I love them I feel like they look so classic, they look nice. So I didn't think twice about it when I was wearing it, but I guess people did and they made sure to tell me. So that comment was maybe also useful. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I will probably do it again, but thank you nonetheless. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm coming towards the end of it, but oh no, there's this one. And there's a similar comment that I've gotten before too. Let me just uh, pull it up. Uh, because I think I, let me give you another context. So uh, I posted another brand deal and this was on YouTube actually. And I was talking about this eczema cream and how it's great for dry skin, which is actually good. Like I have used it before and it's on Amazon, very affordable. But this person gets upset because I said, I think I mentioned that like because I lift and I have these like I forgot what um, psoriasis not psoriasis there is something uh, you get in here that you have like these cracked skin I forgot what it's called um, so anyways yeah I forgot what it's called but you get this cracked skin and I was like oh I get these like uh, rough skin and I just use this and it helps and this person was like so you get in like a uh, quotation, rough hands from lifting, as in like, uh, I'm not lifting well, and you wear gloves, LOL, like lifting gloves, and you use this cream to heal your hands, dot dot dot, whose sister is this? So uh, essentially telling me that like, oh, I'm not lifting properly, I even wear like gym gloves, like who does that? Like. You are such a sissy, essentially. That's what he's trying to say. And you know what? That's okay. I get it. Not everyone wears gloves at the gym. I feel like I also wouldn't wear it every single day or every time I'm going to the gym, to be honest. I only wear it when I need to. Uh, it really depends. I I really, uh, if I'm lifting, if I'm doing, like lifting, I mean like if I'm doing squats, if I'm doing deadlifts, stuff like that, I would wear it. On other occasions, maybe not. Um, but also, like, I've learned to deal with my um, dry skin and cracked skin. But also, I'm not, oh, I'm also not the kind of person to be like, oh my god, I'm lifting so much or whatever. Maybe I don't look like that, and that's okay, but you don't have to come for me for that, right? But people do it anyways, because they have to make sure to tear your self esteem. I think that is something I struggle the most and that's why I'm going to conclude it in this episode is that I think you could be the most conf confident person uh, in your, with your body, with yourself but as soon as you get on social and people start commenting about your body, about how you sound like or just about yourself overall, that's when it starts to get like it goes to the dark place. It affects your mental health. It affects you as an overall person. I think if the comment is constructive, maybe you didn't do something right and that's okay, you know, at least it's constructive. 
uh, feedback. But when it comments about like your body or like you're not doing something right or whatever or like you don't look good, that's just sometimes hard because it's making you think twice about yourself and it's making you not like yourself. I think many times that I thought that I looked good and I looked in the camera and I like, I guess had my angles, then I would go on TikTok or, uh, and like I would post videos and stuff like that. Then immediately getting comments like this, and this is like just like very like not that bad comments, but there are times that I have gotten comments about like, oh, like you don't look good, you look bad, or like your body looks different, your body looks like different shape, or, like it's not fit or whatever. It, it affects you, you know, like it definitely affects you. I feel like even at the moment you're like, I'm not gonna take this personally. But I feel like then you think about it, then you start looking in the mirror, you start um, tearing yourself apart and thinking about looking at all of your uh, flaws, although you didn't even see them at first. But people pointed out, then you can see them. I feel like that's what hurts the most because I think anything constructive, anything outside of what you are saying about the person, that's okay. You can say that like, oh, you're, people, if people tell me that, oh, this content sucks, or I'm sorry, this picture doesn't look good, that's okay, I get it. Yes, maybe I could have done better. Maybe the picture is boring. Maybe this background is boring, which I get. I'm still working on it. If you wanna talk, talk shit about this, that's good. But if you tell me, oh, your arms don't look good, um, your eyes, like, they're not symmetrical, your nose is too big, I don't know, stuff like that, that is just messed up. I'm sorry, that's so messed up. Like, what do you want me to do about it? I feel like that's the biggest reason my generation, like younger generation, we are struggling so hard to be comfortable in our own body because we are so mean to each other on social media. And that's why there's like plastic surgery is so common, lip fillers, Botox, and like people getting boob jobs, like people doing all these kind of surgeries to look good because people are so mean to each other and like always talking shit about stuff like this and it honestly sucks like there is no way to sugarcoat this it's not a great environment to be at and that's why i wanted to even make this whole uh like the episode because i want to shine a light on that that it's not fair and it's not really okay to talk to people or mention to people anything about their body because it's their body. Like from Selena Gomez that like, I just recently been seeing like people calling him calling her fat or whatever. It's like it's not cool. Like really, really not cool to talk about someone's weight or someone's body. It's like everyone is struggling with their own demons and it's just so hard to cope with them sometimes when someone from the outside comments on that while you're still working on yourself. Anyways, so that was the episode for today. I hope you guys like this episode. If you do, please don't forget to rate us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast. And I'll see you guys next week with another episode. Bye, guys.